Sketching quadratics is a really, really important skill that we're going to look at in this video. So, sketching a quadratic, we need to know what the x-intercepts are, what the y-intercepts are, but the other important thing, x in, x, what the x-intercepts are, what the y-intercept is, but also the turning point of the quadratic. So, this, I mean, this is just a random one I'm making up. The important, the important points here would be the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, but also the turning point. Yeah point at which it turns, basically, the minimum, or if it was upside down, maximum. the maximum. Now, we get the turning point from a completed square. Um, we already know that if we write a quadratic in this form, yeah. then we've got an inside transformation, which moves it left and right, and an outside transformation, which moves it up and down. Yeah. So this particular one, this has gone down three, and right or left? Well, it's positive inside the bracket, so it's gone left. Left, because it does the opposite, exactly. So this one's gone left too. Mm -hmm. So if it starts off its life here, which is y equals x squared. Yep, normal yep. y equals x squared, and then we move it left two, down three, then it's going to end up somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where it would cross the y axis. I'd have to put x is zero and work out whether it was above or below. But yep. yeah, the completed square is what we need for the turning point. But to get the uh, x-intercepts, the roots, we need to factorise them. So in order to get going with our sketch, we definitely need to complete the square and to factorise. So I'll do that first. I'll complete the square. So that's x and then half of minus 2 is minus 1 squared. Always minus here. And then that will be squared. And then the minus 8 on the end. x minus 1 squared minus 9. So that's the uh, completed square form. I'm also going to factorise it, if I can. Um, 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 is it four and two? Yes. yes. Minus plus? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you agree with that? Agree. Okay, right. So, this turning point, this has gone right one down nine. Okay. The factorised form, so the turning point, is going to be 1 minus 9. Right, 1 down 9. Yeah. Um, the roots, the x-intercepts, will be minus 2 and 4. Yes. I can work out the y-intercept by putting in x is 0. When x is 0, y is 0 squared minus 2 lots of 0 minus 8, which is minus 8. So I've got loads of information here. I've got the turning point, I've got the x-intercepts, I've got the y-intercept, everything. I know it's a positive quadratic, so it's a U shape. So the sketch should be fairly straightforward now. Um, okay, write one down nine with a y-intercept of minus eight. So that's going to be something like this, I think. Write one down nine. Well, yeah. No? Well, I was going to say, yeah, it's about right, but if that's minus eight, so just a bit. Oh, yeah, my scale isn't very good. It's a good point. My scale isn't very good. I don't think I mind that. <laughs> I think I would be more fussed about the roots being relatively okay. Maybe I should have done the roots first. I tend to do the roots first, then the wind set, and yeah. then the point for the other thing. So then you kind of got it mapped out in your head and you just join the yeah. four dots. Yeah. As long as you've kept joining them smoothly. Yeah. yeah, and as long as your, your, your um, x-intercepts are roughly relative to the origin right, so that your turning point ends up in the right place. place. Yeah. Doesn't accidentally end up on the x-axis or something, on, on the y-axis. So yeah, that's that's basically how I'm doing. Do you want to have a go? I'm going to have a go. Right. So I want x in terms, don't I? Yeah. which is minus 6 squared and then always minus
I had written out the extra step to give myself a little bit of time there. Yep. <laughs> and can we have always sentences? So y equals this, which equals this, which equals this. <laughs> right, we get the end x intercepts when y is zero. Yep. So we're then gonna end up factorizing that. Ideally, yeah. If we can. Yeah. So let's be hopeful and try it. So uh, uh, two and ten. Oh yeah. Minus ten. two minus ten. Yep, yep. Good. So equals, yep. Yeah. <laughs> This one is 0 equals x minus 2, and yep. this one is 0 equals x minus 10. Yep. So x is 2, or x is 10. Excellent. Cool. Y intercept when x is 0, so y equals 0 squared minus 12 lots of 0 plus 20, which is 20. Mm -hmm. Right. That's all the information I need now, isn't yep. it? 1, 2, 3. Ah. Well, we haven't extracted the turning point yet, but... No. Okay, so, so this bit means it's doing a right yep. six. Yep, right six. And then down yep. sixteen. Down sixteen, yeah. This is the down sixteen and this is the right six. Yeah. So that is a turning point of six. Yeah, six. Yeah, right six. Back. And then down to the yeah. Team. Yep, that's it. Brilliant. Okay, so. I know I've got 2 and 10. Mm -hmm. Y set to 20. Mm -hmm. And turning point to 2, 4, 6. Yeah, and it will always be halfway between those two. Minus 16. Yeah, the turning point's always halfway between the loops. Yep, lovely. And it, it don't have to be. I mean, if you drew if you drew this, for example, and label this twenty, and this two, and this ten, and this six comma minus sixteen, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Yeah. Relatively, it's all fine. Yeah. Yeah, because you're still showing what, you, you know, yeah. what you're doing here. Yeah, you? exactly. And the turning yeah. point's in the right quadrant. Everything's in the right quadrant, so it's fine. Okay, there's a couple more for you to try. So pause the video, try those yourselves, and then we'll go through the answers. Okay, so this one, uh, let's complete the square first. We get x minus 3 squared minus minus 3 squared plus 7. So that gives us our turning point. We know we've gone right three, because that's inside the bucket, and down two, and that's that bit sorted. Um, I'll do the wind set, because that's easy. X is zero, it's zero squared minus six, lots of zero plus seven, is what Y is, so Y is seven. Mm -hmm. So I already know that I'm gonna go right three, down two, like this, this is going to be 7, this is going to be uh, 3 minus 2. Yeah. So now all I need is the roots. So, um, is this factorizable? 1 and 7? Well, no, because you'd need the same, you need the same uh, sign of the vote you can get. Are you? Yeah. Because I don't even need that, yeah, which would give me 8 in the middle, or this, which would give me minus 8 in the middle. Yeah. So that's not going to work. Okay, so what we're faced with is the uh, very much GCSE problem of solving the equation x squared minus 6x plus 7, but unfortunately we can't factorise. Now we've got two options. We can use the quadratic formula which I will demonstrate, or we can rearrange the completed square, which I prefer. Yeah. So first of all, I'll do quadratic formula just as a demonstration. Um, x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 lots of a, c, all over 2a. 
So that's 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 28, thanks, all over 2. And that is equal to, using, don't forget, the V. We've got 6 over 2, 3, plus or minus a half of the square root of 8. 8, thanks. And that is root 4 root 2. And root 4 is 2. And 2 times a half is 1. So 3 plus or minus root 2. Yeah. Okay. Now this makes sense because we know that this is 3. Yeah. And that will be halfway between the roots. So this one is 3 minus root 2. And that one is 3 plus root 2. Exactly. Yeah. But I just want to demonstrate how much nicer it is to use the completed square. Mm -hmm. So take the same equation. 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 7. And instead of going straight for the formula, we can't factorise. Let's use our completed square, x we've minus, which we've done already to get the turning point. Put the 2 on the other side. Square root. Move the 3. And there's our roots. And that's so much nicer than this mess. I mean, sometimes you need the formula, or sometimes you're told to use it. But rearranging the completed square is a much, much nicer way to find those roots. Okay, do you want to have a go at the last one? Yep. Oh, already factorised for you. How convenient. Okay, so uh, that means I can do the y-intercept nicely. Mm -hmm. That's when x is 0, so y is 4, and then, oh look, 1 minus 0, so that means it's a, a negative product. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's four plus one four. Yep, that's the y intercept. So x intercept, x intercept when y is zero. So zero equals x minus four, well, x plus four and one minus yeah. x. So x plus four is zero, x is minus four or one minus x is zero, so x is one. Exactly. Yep. So should we put that information on? So we've got four there. Got minus four and one. Exactly. So you can see the shape already. Yeah. You can see it's going to go like this. Yeah. So now I've just got to find this one. The turning point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can almost predict what it might be. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. So if it's got to be halfway between minus four and one. Yeah. There's a distance of five there, so yep. it's going to be two and a half. Yeah. So well, it'll be two and a half a lot in that direction and two and a half in that direction, which would mean we end up at minus one and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Something. Exactly. Yeah. Now this is a really good point. We've got two options here. Usually, to get the turning point, we complete the square. Yeah. But in this case, given that you can see what the x-intercept is going to be, because it's halfway between the roots, yeah. then what we can do Just to find the height is what we're asking is, what is y when x is minus 3 over 2? Yeah. So we can just take the original equation, we can put in x is minus 3 over 2, find out what y is. Yeah. It's a good check, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. How does that work out? I mean, it's fractions, but... So, right, should we try it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we've got minus 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2, which is 8 over 2. Yeah, 4 is 8 over 2. Yeah. yeah. Which is a bit nicer, isn't it? And then 1, which is 2 over 2. Yeah. Minus 3. Oh, exactly. minus, minus, so plus 3 over 2. Yeah, plus 3 over 2. Yeah. Right, so here we've got... Minus 3 plus 8, which is 5 over 2. Minus 5. No, you're right, 5. <laughs> and then another 5 over 2. Yep. 2 plus 3, 5, 5 over 2. Which is, right, multiply across the top, 25. Multiply across the bottom, 4. Excellent. So we know that this is 25 over 4. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. The only other thing, always write in sentences. Y equals this, which equals this, which equals this. So you're always communicating in full sentences. The completing the square is going to be a bit tricky. So I'll demonstrate what 
we need to, I mean, we've got the turning point now, that's fine, but normally we do it by completing the square, and we complete the square when we've got it in expanded form, and we've got it in factorised form. Yeah. So the first thing we need to do is unfactorise it, which is a bit of a pain. Um, x minus x squared plus 4 minus 4x, so that's minus x squared um, minus, minus 3x plus 4, exactly. Now, this minus sign, anything in front of that x squared means that our normal way of completing the square doesn't work. So we can't have that, that there. So what I'm going to do to get rid of it temporarily is I'm going to multiply both sides of this, of this expression by minus 1. Okay. So I'm going to create a new thing. Minus y equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. And that's still true. Because yeah. I've just multiplied both sides by minus 1. It's only temporary anyway, because what I want to do is complete the square. So this is x add 3 over 2 squared minus 3 over 2 squared minus 4, which is, this is minus y, don't forget, not y. x add 3 over 2 squared minus 9 over 4, squaring the top and the bottom, yeah. minus 16 over 4. Uh, minus y is x plus 3 over 2 squared minus 25 over 4. Mm -hmm. Now obviously that's minus y, not y. I need to know what y is, so I'll just multiply both sides by minus 1 again. So I'm undoing the step that I did earlier. So this would become negative, and this would become positive. Okay, so now that we've got it in completed square form, we can see that it's going left 3 over 2, up 25 over 4, which is exactly what you've got. Left 3 over 2, up and 25 just, that's over the, 4. That, that minus then just tells you that it's upside yep. down, doesn't it? It doesn't actually change. Yeah, yep, it's yep. a negative quadratic. That's what turns it upside down. So it's an outside transformation which flips it yep. like this. So instead of looking like that, it will look like that. That's yep. what that minus does exactly. Fantastic.